Welcome to the fifth video of um, Computer Networks and the Internet. This is the last video for this particular chapter. In this video, we'll learn about protocol layers and the history of um, computer networks. Okay, so the first um, uh, topic, we will learn about protocol layers and also surface models. Okay, uh, so we have learned that computer networks are a complex system with many pieces, uh, many nuts, many bolts com uh, consist and uh, co completed each other. So the question is, is there how 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 we can uh, organize and manage this complex structure of networks? So our discussion on protocol layers will uh, based on these particular questions: how to manage the organization of or to organize the structure of these very complex networks. So let's see the analogy of um, organization of air travel. Uh, if someone travel using uh, airlines from first um, uh, source for the um, source city or the actual city to the destination city, the, we, 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 we will see how the end-to-end -end transfer of person plus baggage go through the system. Um, well, less complex, but in kind of similar analogy of the computer um, networks. Okay. How would you discuss the system of airline travel? Well, it's, it consists of series of steps and involve uh, many of services from the ticket purchasing, baggage check-in, gates and boarding the gate, runway takeoff, the, the, the airplane go through the particular um, road defined by uh, air traffic controller, for example, and whenever the air, airplane arrives into the city of the destination, they will go through the same um, system but in the backwards procedure uh, it, the, the, the airplane will land into the runway the passenger will uh, go out from the gates claim the baggage and if there is some complaint uh, they will complain to the ticketing um, uh, person or people so uh, these organizations these services of airline travel organized into several layers several different layers each layer implement a particular service this one, purchasing ticket, one layer, baggage, one layer, gets one layer, and we take off one layer, and air building is one layer. Each layer rely on the next layer. And uh, somehow managing this kind of services will make it easier because each um, services will be managed by different set of actor. For example, um, ticketing persons will have different role than some people in the boarding gate, for example, or also the, the, the one who is responsible for routing the airplane will have different um, company, probably with the one who manage um, the baggage check-in. So the question is why layering? So the, this layering approach um, at least have to, not definite, but probably two different answer. First one is, use um, by layering we can explicitly identify each structures and also this layer will uh, define the relationship between each layers and by this concept by the same concept computer networks is referred by um, the layer two different layering model the first one is OSI and the second one is TCP IP I think in this particular course we will focus more on the, the later, the, the second one, the TCP IP um, reference model of layering. The second answer is by by layering the um, the systems we can modular modularize um, to for easy maintenance and updating each layer. If one layer must be upgraded or updated, um, the, the update will somehow will not significantly affect the other uh, layer. Okay, so let's see now to the layered internet protocol stack. Uh, the first layer is called application layer. This is the top layer, or well, you can see the bottom layer up to uh, where you can view this layer. Um, this this layers uh, is where the application reside. Uh, several protocols related to the application, such as HTTP, IMAP, SMTP, DNS, and 
go down the first layer after application layers called transport layer. This layer responsible for data transfer process. Uh, so far, there are only two um, protocols here, TCP and UDP. Go down there to the network layer. The, this layer responsible for routing the datagrams. Go through from one router to another router from source to destination. The protocols uh, involved in this layer is um, Internet Protocol IP and also another several routing protocols. Uh, next, go down to the link layer. This is the logical respon responsible logically for data transfer be between neighboring um, component, one router to ne neighboring network element. Uh, so uh, several protocols involved in these um, layers are Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and etc. And the last um, layer is called physical layer. Uh, it's the really it's physical. It uh, responsible for uh, transferring the bits of bits of data throughout the cable, for example, or the uh, radio signal, radio electromagnetic um, signal in wireless network. So, let's see how these layers um, impact the, the package being sent uh, within the computer networks. So, first thing first in the application layer, any application you, you build, um, it will communicate with other application by sending the message. This message will then be encapsulated by the, the, um, the next layer lower than the application layer. In this case, the transport layer. The message will be encapsulated by the header of transport layer. And now it, it is called segment. The segment is uh, when the, pack, the, the message has been encapsulated by, by the transport layer header. And then going through the net, next one, network layer. It also will be um, being encapsulated by the network layer header, and now it's uh, called datagram. So, you know, message, um, message, and then segment, and then datagram, go down to the link layer. It also will be um, encapsulated by the link layer header, and it and now called frame. Of course, going to physical layer it's the actual transportation bit by bit sending to, uh, to from the source to the destination well because well the physical layer is not something that we will learn in computer science faculty maybe some some students in uh, electronic and engineering electrical engineering or computer engineering will learn about the physical one but no no we, we here in the computer science uh, we will not learn about the physical Okay. In the center uh, view, the process will be encapsulating by each layer, and then in the receiver one, it will be like extracting the package, removing each header, and uh, uh, passing the message, the actual message, to another, to the receiver. So that's the idea of uh, being encapsulating. So this is the diagram, message to the transport layer, Encapsulated and called segment. Going down, network layer, encapsulated and called datagram. Go down, uh, encapsulated by the link layer header and called frame. And then being sent. Uh, in this router, this part in, in the router, they will change the header. So they extract the header here and encapsulate with the new one and being set to destination. At destination, it will be extracted again until the message uh, received by the application at the other end. Okay, that's all about the protocol layers. Uh, and the, the, this protocol layers is the main core of the course. So chapter two, we'll learn about application layer. Chapter three, we'll, we, will be learn, we will learn about the transport layer, network layer, link layer, but not physically. The last part we will talk about history. It's quite easy, but well, we should uh, know about the history of the internet itself. So this is this, the first part of the internet, 91 to 72, early packet switching principle in this um, period. 
the packet switching principle is being discovered. Why it's important? Because the packet switching is the backbone principle of the the the, the, trans, the, the internet uh, itself. The second part is the seventy two eighty, where where the, the the computer has been uh, discovered that we can interconnect several computers all together. Uh, this is where the net, the Aloha net being introduced, the architecture for interconnecting networks being discovered, uh, and the important part, uh, the, the important principles of internet working is it must uh, incorporate the principle of minimalism, autonomy, best effort, stateless, and decentralized control. These principles, you have to learn about it, uh, think about it, because all of the algorithm, all of the technique that we will learn later on will be based on this kind of principles. Okay, and the Ethernet being introduced. And the next part is uh, where the new protocols and the standardization of network is being done between 80 to 90. TCP IP being discovered, SMTP, DNS, uh, FTP, all protocols are being discovered in this period and uh, there are several new network, uh, computer networks of CSNet, BitNet, NSFNet, Minitel and all. This is one of the booming of the internet, first millennia, uh, where the website is being discovered, hypertext, HTML, HTTP, and many kind of application being developed within this time period. And the last part of the internet is in today's um, era. We, we know about uh, SDN, cloud computing, Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, and many things about new uh, and interesting aspect of the computer network. So uh, that's uh, the whole network. Uh, computer networks history up to now and the internet history up to now and that's all up to this video we have covered a lot of materials of computer networks but only at the skin or the edge of the material we haven't go depth we haven't go deep into the uh, core concept of the computer networks but at least up to now you have uh, learned what what are the material that we will learn for the next week and the next chapter and that's all for um, today's material. Thank you and see you again in the next video.